All right, so I'm gonna be just trying this out, see how it sounds. We're gonna do more like a close up, see what the vibe is, see how it's different. I'm gonna to talk to you about Pride today and what my feelings are on it. It's 2023 and I've been transitioning for about a little over five years now, which is crazy to think because it feels like yesterday that I was at two. And um, I'm gonna be on a Pride Parade float on Sunday with the guy that I'm seeing, he's dating, uh, he's dating, he's DJing on the float. So I'll be there to support him. I'll be shooting, I'll be the social media manager. That's how I get on the float. But um, yeah, I'm going. And you know what the first thing I thought of? What, the first thing I thought of was what's my outfit gonna be? And then second of all, how am I gonna carry a gun? <laughs> I know that's like the dumbest thing for me to think, but it's also like, that's kind of a reality, right? Like you just think about all the, the freaking like violence and terrorism on like LGBT and all of that. And I just saw a, um, I just saw that there was a shooting at beyond wonderland out in Washington, which is like a, a rave. And it's like, they're, they're not, there's nothing even political about them, but there's a person who came out there and started shooting people. So there you go. That's the, the world we live in. It's just like desensitization and people just getting shot left and right. So when I was just thinking of how can I get a concealed carry in my booty shorts, which sounds absurd, I was actually thinking about that. And uh, the answer is I, I, I can't, it, my gun is too big. <laughs> <laughs> double meaning, double meaning. That was intentional. Uh, no, it wasn't. But um, yeah, my gun is too big. I can't carry it. Um, and there's no way I'm going to hide it. And I also don't really have a concealed carry permit. I, I slacked on that. I also slacked on getting my AR-15 registered. So I don't have an AR-15 anymore. Um, that's sad. Should I even be saying that on camera? Um, I don't have one. It's, it's, I never owned one technically. I was just borrowing my friends and it's just going to stay that way, unfortunately, because now it's illegal, um, which, you know, for better or for worse, it seems like all of the gun violence in Seattle is all with pistols. So that says something about the effectiveness of that gun law, but gun laws are a totally different topic. Gosh. Um, so yeah, so there, there's an element of safety. That's probably like the first thing that I'm wondering about. And then I'm thinking about, well, like what's my exit strategy if there, if something does go down, like how do I get out of there? Um, how do I approach safety here? Like, what do I have to look out for? Am I going to be under fire? Like what, what are those kinds of things? And it's sad to think that we, we have to think this way, but also it's kind of reminiscent of, or maybe not even as bad as what it was like to originally do these pride parades, right? Like back in the days when it was even like frightening to be openly gay, you couldn't even really do that. So like we're approaching some other kind of precipice here where it feels like it's a division of reality where people are consuming content that says that um, trans people are trying to sexualize others. And then you have like these uh, pedophiles that are trying to get in on the LGBT plus. And then you have like seeds of arguments that are like not even valid arguments that I don't even think LGBT people are saying, but like is being seeded by like bots that are trying to sow seeds of disruption into like our community saying that um you're having like lgb wants to separate from the t and like why like <clears throat> i don't even think that's like a thing that people in the lgbt community think i mean there may be a few people that have that idea seated but if you look back at lgbt history a lot of pride and a lot of like the original kind of protesting came from trans people. So it's like, why? that's why it's fused. It's because our whole movement was together. Like we all kind of moved with each other. So like, why, like, so you're just gonna like leave us now that you got your rights and, and we don't? Like that's fucked up, bro. <laughs> bro, like, come on, like, like keep, let's, we're in this game together. Let's keep going. Um. But like, yeah, I mean, I just think this is all a psyop, honestly. Like it just, it's, it feels like it's, it's not even true. 
like none of this is very real like how many layers of unreal do we want to unravel here like i'm not even trying to talk political it's just how i feel about pride pride is um pride is weird for me like i historically have just kind of at first pride was really exciting because i had an excuse to be out when i was non-binary and more afraid of going out as non-binary but now I my perspective on it has changed. It seems like it has become more mainstream to a point where I don't really care. It feels like an excuse to party and not really like about rights and, and visibility and celebrating. It's just more about celebrating um, rather than celebrating you, celebrating your uniqueness. And of course, some people are going to celebrate it that way, but I see a lot of hetero cis people joining in, and that's great. I'm glad that we have allies, but it just doesn't feel the same thing when I see a group of teenagers who are there all dressed up like they're a part of Pride, and they're like chugging bottles on the side because it's it's basically a, a party to walk in and just have a really good time. I'm happy they're celebrating with us, but it's just it doesn't feel the same maybe things will change maybe this year will be different because it does feel like there's a bit more pressure on the lgbtqia uh, scene um, where it feels like we do need to be a little bit more political but i mean it's like the whole pride concept while it is political it's also just about allowing yourself to be celebrated when the entire world oppresses you and says that you're not valid and that it's not really right for you to exist. And uh, what is that purpose of pride here in Seattle or in San Francisco versus what is that pride worth and uh, intended to be or, or that outcome if you're doing it in some place that's more openly transphobic, like some places in the United States or worse, like Eastern Europe and uh, even worse so, probably Asia, um, minus like a couple places. But even like Thailand, they won't even give you... Um, they won't even give you the correct gender marker in Thailand. You're still like, if you're a trans woman, you're still a male and you can't change that, which is really, totally fucked. Um, I kind of like having this mic closer to me. It does really feel like a podcast. How are you, how are you, uh, vibing with this? Are you, are you vibing with it? Does my face look weird if I zoom, zoom in a little bit? Um, so yeah, so back to pride. How did I feel? It's 2023. Like, I, I wish we were over this. I wish we were over, like, let's get trans rights. Let's get things going. And it feels like we, we've slipped backwards and, and gone in, in a direction that just doesn't feel as accepting. And I feel like we just got lost or, like, the larger community got lost in this thing to do with, like, not not the community, but, like, the social media community got lost in all of this political stuff that we get... Um, scapegoated on and i think i don't want to scapegoat someone else but <laughs> but i do feel like this started to really pop up when you had people that were um i wouldn't call them cross dressers but more like the uh the what are they called the people that pretend to be another gender, but they're not the, um, the people that put on the, the, these crazy makeup and stuff. I'm for, I can't believe I'm forgetting the word, you know, those people, the drag queens, fuck. <laughs> like I, okay. There's many ways that I can see this. I, first of all, I applaud people that celebrate being a drag queen and enjoy it in ways where it feels it feels right and appropriate, but isn't it just kind of weird, this whole like political discussion where we have drag queens trying to read stories at children's events or like in elementary school about being a drag queen or what have you, and then trans rights get pulled into the discussion as if somehow drag queens are uh, trans, and then somehow this gets wrapped up in trying to sexualize children and to, um, 
kind of like create this world where it's more confusing for children and that they are now have to be thinking about their sexuality. Like it's all feels like it's all muddied and, and confusing. And I just, I wish we didn't have to, first of all, have drag queens dragging trans issues through this. And I don't even think they're even trying to, it's just kind of like, it's all amalgamated because drag queens are men in dresses. And then people misconstrue men in dresses as trans women in dresses. And I get it. Like representation of trans women has not been good historically speaking, because it's funnier to laugh at a non-passing a uh, trans woman who sounds and acts like a man and is wearing a dress. And oftentimes the comedy is it's a man that has to pretend to be a woman for some kind of reason. And that's why it's funny, but that easily gets conflated with a trans woman because a trans woman can look like what would look like uh, from a societal perspective of that kind of looks like a man in a dress. And then suddenly you run into this depersonalization of that person. And then you run into like this whole like tr this whole transphobic view of trans women, which is that they're all men in dresses, they're all pretending to be women, and, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And that's something that is a deep-seated fear that I've kind of worked through and spent a lot of time. And a part of the reason why I don't have that fear anymore is because I've invested so much money into my face and my body so that hopefully I don't get seen as that. But, like, that was a huge motivation for doing my own FFS. So... <laughs> I kind of, kind of, like, I'm, I'm, it's unraveling and I just kind of need to pull it back here. It's like, there's all sorts of complicated stuff to do with LGBT. And I just, I don't know. I don't think tr drag queens are trying to get, like, are trying to just say, like, hey, kids, you need to sexualize yourselves. I don't think they're trying to say that. And they're also not trying to speak on trans rights, but somehow you know, you get this whole discussion and, and I'm just like, look guys, first of all, like drag queens, that's great. But like, what is a drag queen doing in an elementary school, reading kid, reading stories to kids? Like, why don't we have clowns as well? And, and why don't we have, like, if they're performing, then we should have other performers as well. And it, being a drag queen is this kind of accentuated, sexualized uh, presentation of, of the female form. Like if you're going to have a drag queen in a non-sexualized way in an elementary school, then maybe it makes sense to just present yourself as, as a woman. And if that is the case, then why not just have a trans woman come speak? And does that trans woman have to be there speaking about being trans? Could a trans woman just be there reading you a story and that we don't have to make this whole thing a topic? I don't know. Like, please, like, you're probably going to roast me in the comments and I'm sorry because I'm just like kind of saying some of these thoughts that are a bit unstructured, but I've been thinking about these a lot. And there's a lot of people in the trans community that, that aren't really saying this, but are telling me behind closed doors, this is how they are feeling. So like, I feel in some way that I need to speak this up because it's just kind of like this very far left and very far right world where you have people that are like, yes, like let's have drag queens. Will you stop text messaging me? Let's have drag queens talking to kids about like stories and stuff and then like on the other side you have people who are like we're they're pedophiles and they're trying to make pedophilia like okay and acceptable gosh i'm like really going off the rails here i just and and to relate this back to pride it just it makes me feel disconnected from pride it makes me feel disconnected in some ways with the lgbt audience because i feel like we should be reasonable we should not be trying to pushing the extremities of the human experience uh, and expecting everyone to understand and to adopt and to just like respect our pronouns to um, to really like catch up to where we are. It's like um, it, it's like they like human reality is about sharing reality and 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 uh constructing it and having shared notions and concepts of reality that we can agree upon and being trans is one of those things that seem to question and call into question fundamental realities of our existence and how we see things and how we experience things 
not everyone is enlightened. <laughs> not everyone understands that a trans woman or a trans man is a, is a, is a man and is a woman. And uh, just like, it's just, they don't. And you get into these, you see these spouts on social media where people are fighting and calling each other tr transphobic or Nazis or um, <clears throat> on the right. I don't know. They call us I don't even know what they call us anymore. I just get a lot of hateful comments every now and then where they tell me about how I'm always going to look like a man or sound like a man or they knew that I was a man and what have you. And it's just like, okay, like, what's the point? Like, why do you take time out of your life to make, try and make my life worse? Like, what kind of pain in your heart is there where you feel like you're getting pain out of your heart by trying to inflict pain on others? Um, that's kind of like, I think there's that, which is a root of the issue is you have people who are socialized and, or like they have a lack of socialization because we live in a world that no longer exists as like a tribal community where we exist in a world that's disconnected through technology. Um, we also have like the proliferation of, um, uh, social media and how we can create our own, our own communities through the internet. And um, you have this like really weird echo chamber that's happening where people are just co-creating realities that they think are real because it's, it's socially constructed back to that reality, shared reality thing. And um, you, you, you start to create and project onto the world that you think that this is real. And I think it happens to both sides. I was talking to a trans, a uh, woman who is far, far left. And I said something to her that kind of upset her. And uh, she was upset because I said that the far right and the far left could lead to be, could, could like push each other so extremely that they would become terrorists and it would just be terrorism. And she said, hold up, wait a minute. Far left people are like the, the, the anti-fascists are not terrorists they are anti-fascists they are fighting fascists it's the 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 nazis and the fascists the people on the far right that are the terrorists and from her perspective i think she's correct and from my perspective i could say she's kind of correct because they're the ones that are fighting us but if i was on the perspective of the far right and i am living in an echo chamber that's saying they're trying to normalize and sexualize kids and like destroy like human regulatory like children's endocrine systems by like trying to get them to take hormones early and, and like you have this whole narrative that's built up like we're the bad guys and we're part of like this larger conspiracy by like i don't know george soros or something um or the reptilians or or some other like you know government conspiracy because they're anti-government and all of that it I, I can see why we look like the bad guys and like let's be clear like uh, anti-fascists have killed p innocent people like they've shot them they've even thought that like th they've shot like old 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 uh old people like old like grandpas and grandmas because they got caught in crossfires or they thought that they were they were far right so it's just like intentional or unintentional people are getting shot on both sides and <laughs> this is america <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens is we fight for our freedoms with guns. So like back to the original point, I'm going to pride. The first thing I'm thinking of is should I have a gun? It's what a world we live in. Isolation leads to like, and, and, and social media can lead to like some really crazy things. Um, so like, how do I feel about it? I feel like what I would like to do is I'd just like to go and I'd like to celebrate and enjoy and see all the beautiful people, which is pretty pretty much what I expect to happen and what probably will happen. I wouldn't be going to this if I really thought I was in danger, but there is an element of danger that I'm aware of. Um, had, had I be doing this like somewhere else um, where I feel like things are more questionable than maybe maybe, but I don't know. It's Washington. People love guns and Seattle is sort of like, uh, it's the Democrat portion of the state and the rest of the state is not so democratic and i've lived in the countryside so i can tell you all about how many guns they have out there um yeah 
I don't know. Like, what do you what do you think of this? Like, does this make a, much sense to you? I'm sorry that I just like went off on a tangent here, and we may not even see this video because it's it's pretty intense, and I've just covered a bunch of stuff. I just I don't know. It, it seems to me like it's all fake. Like this is this is all just a big like divide and conquer thing, uh, a classic move that the Chinese did to the Mongolians before Genghis Khan came around was to just keep all the tribes fighting, keep the tribes as tribes, keep the tribes as separate, and have them fight each other. And they would hire tribes to fight other tribes so they would create conflict between each other. And then at some point, Genghis Khan said, no, I'm the shit. You're going to treat me like... I." He said to the other tribes, like, I am now the king. You are going to treat me as the king or die. And he united all of the cons and the tribes and then, you know, took over China. And that that's history, right? It's like the same thing here. But instead of uh, it being LGBT versus or far left versus far right, this is really just like poor versus the ultra rich. And like, you can see me as like, upper mid class or whatever because I work in tech and I make enough money to be able to live in my own apartment which is like crazy like I have to be you have to you can be considered wealthy because you can live in a one bedroom apartment like that's crazy to me but like let's be honest here I still work for someone else and I'm still like in the same system as everyone else that's an employee and um the true wealth are, are the people that have just insane amounts of money but if you get people to just divide each other up into different identities and into different groups and to think that there's other people that they can say are different than them then it becomes a lot easier to not focus on the real thing like if we actually had uh, an appropriate gradation of classes in our society and we actually labeled these classes and and said all right look like Everyone who makes under $500,000 is actually in the lower class and you're all one class really and you have gradations within the lower class but you're all one class and then people that make 500,000 a year or have 500,000 assets up to probably something like 10, 50 million are in the middle class and then everyone above people people that own like 50 million or even 100 million are in the upper class and then you have those gradations, that might be a little bit more accurate and that we might be able to look at things a little bit better. So like, you know, trans rights, LGBT rights and all of that, but what's actually going on here? What's what's actually happening? I think those are the things that, that we should be talking about and thinking about, you know, like, should I, like, should I have my trans rights in to go to the right bathroom of my sex? Yes. Can, do we have to debate about that? Well, what's your basic human principle? Do you want to respect people that show up to the table and just say, hey, can you just call me by this name and these pronouns? You don't have to like rub it in the face, the fact that they don't pass or don't look a certain way and not accept them. And on the other side, you don't have to, like, if you are trans and you're not getting your pronouns respected, you don't have to, like, create, like, legal action and, and make it, like, this really, really difficult thing. Like, I mean, sometimes you do, but um, I think there's kind of, like, this name-calling, pointing thing going on from one, one side and the other side, and no one's talking about the housing crisis or inflation or the fact that, uh, or, like, the fact that we're killing people abroad and that we're still in wars or... Um, yeah, the climate change, like there's really, really, really big issues. But I mean, it pays not to talk about these really big issues because companies make way more money not talking about it and not having regulation around all of the resources that they consume. It's better to make us feel guilty for all the resources we consume and that say we're, we're the people that are causing climate change when it's really, if, if you look at it, it's all the corporations, the really, really big ones that are creating all of the, the expenses and, and, and all of these massive shipping uh, uh, boats that are like in the middle of the United States, like each ship like generates something like 3% of, of like carbon emissions. It's, it's ridiculous. And sure, you could argue all of the stuff we order on Amazon is partially the reason why it's shipping and, and all of that. But 
Like, where is the carbon tax? Where is the solution to all of this? Like, externalities allow corporations to run wild. Why do corporations have rights as humans? Why can't we have that conversation? Because if if we could if we could just take that away, suddenly the CEO of like Exxon and this company and that company suddenly they're liable for the decisions they make. And do you think the decisions they're going to make are going to be a little different? I think totally are. White collar crime, they just get away with it. What a ridiculous thing. Wow, this is <laughs> this is red red pill Ashley time. I'm sorry, I've just got off the rails here. I guess it's like this is what happens when you make me more of a podcaster. Um, whoever is reviewing this, please tell me if this is worth doing or if I should just scrap this. I should probably just stop. But thank you for joining me on this long, long tangent. And if you like this video, please like it. Please let me know. Please subscribe, join. I may have lost some subscribers today because I just laid it all out. But maybe I'll see you in another episode soon. Bye.